Time having arise, I'm going to call the 7 p.m. Finance Committee, uh, Tuesday, January 17th, to order. Uh, councilors, um, agenda items 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 erroneously was sent to the FinCom. Should have been sent to planning under the procedure. Should have gone to planning, then they would have their, whole, their formal hearing, then they'd have 45 days to issue a recommendation, then it would come back to the full council. The council could then send it to finance or act on it in a public hearing. I do apologize profusely to those that came here, the residents and the constituents that came here. Uh, it was an unintentional error. Um, the invited guests, uh, Mr. Rowley and Mr. Newton, um, are not here as well tonight due to this fact. So again, I do, I do apologize as chair. I know my colleagues, um, Mr. Lally and Mr. Yaneri also apologize. It just came to our attention right now. Uh, but we do want to make sure that the procedure is done appropriately, the public hearing and mass general law is adhered to. So unfortunately, counselors, agenda item one, two, three, four, and five will not be heard tonight, and I am going to have to entertain a motion. Make a motion to postpone. Second. Second. Counselor, was that agenda items one, one collectively? Um, motion to postpone items one through five to the next finance meeting, pending further instructions from our council. Motion made, properly seconded. Agenda items one, two, three, four, and five. All in favor of postponing, please raise your hand. All opposed, those matters will be postponed. Madam Clerk, if we could go on to uh, agenda item six, please. Appropriation of $73,037.87 from unappropriated estimated receipts of the general fund for fiscal year 2017. $73,037.87 to fiscal year 2016 court judgment, $62,904.30. Roof repair fund, $632.46. Fiscal year 2015 9-11 grant fund, $3,381.43. And the fiscal year 2013 state 911 grant fund for $6,119.68. 68 cents. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Johnny Condon, Chief Financial Officer. Good evening, Mr. Condon. Good evening, Councilors. Uh, this order or this requested spending was originally filed back before the city set the tax rate. It got recommitted to the Finance Committee. Subsequent to that time, the tax rate was set. So this order, as uh, in front of you, needs to be tabled because it can't be acted on out of taxes this year. I will inform you that. All of these were put in front of you so that the city council would know what was going on with them. In the case of the snow and ice deficit, that's been taken care of. You can just take care of that on the tax recapitulation sheet that the, the state uh, receives. That's it's a court judgment as deficit spending is allowed and it just get raised on the cap recap sheet. So that one's been taken care of. The grant funds, which were less than 10,000 or about 10,000 in total, have to be postponed to another date. Uh, we can either let it be a deduction against free cash in March for $10,000, pretty inconsequential, or we can take care of it another time. The state does allow grant funds to remain in deficit for a little bit of time. So that was the disposition of all of those, but this should be uh, tabled. Motion to postpone to March, FinCom. Second. Second. Uh, point of parliamentary information, I believe these need to be tabled and refiled as, a whole, as an entire new. Correct. Because these were prior to the tax rate. We need to table this and have a new order sent to us. Is That's correct, Councilor. Okay, then I'll, I'll say motion to table then until March. Would, Councilor, withdraw the, your previous. Would, I'll withdraw my previous motion to postpone and move to table. Second. Motion uh, to table. Uh, motion was made properly seconded to table. All in favor? All opposed, that motion carries. Agenda item is, you, uh, six is tabled. Councilors, I do uh, want to indicate that Councilor Bonds had indicated to me earlier today she's unfortunately unable to attend. Council Monahan also is under the weather. He's unable to attend. We do have formal written uh, uh, notification from the city treasurer collector, Marty uh, Brophy. Uh, he also was unable to attend this evening. Um, Mr. Robert Jenkins, executive director of BRA, left me a voicemail message. He too is under the weather. He is unable to attend uh, as well when we get to that agenda item. If we could move on to agenda item number seven, please. Order, the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support the preservation and restoration of urban parks through the Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Committees, Communities Park Grant Program. And the City of Brockton is eligible for 400000 in park grant funding, and the Brockton Redevelopment Authority has allocated 120000 in community development block grant funds for Walker Playground. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic and Development, Rob Jenkins, Executive Director of the BRA. Again, Councilors, Mr. Jenkins is unable to attend, but Mr. May is here. Good evening, Mr. May. Good evening, sir. Councilors. Hmm. 
Um, I was contacted by uh, Councillor Farwell uh, with a couple of questions and concerns, and um, I did uh, produce a memo and mailed it out, or emailed it to all council members, also mailed it out uh, U.S. mail. Um, I believe we've addressed um, the, council, uh, the questions that, that Councillor Farwell have uh, or has, uh, the first one being if we um, uh, change the uh, uh, proposal that, that uh, was on the conceptual design uh, by uh, removing the uh, full-size soccer field, was that going to affect, uh, affect our scoring? And the answer to that is no, it will not affect our scoring. However, um, we should note that all plans need to be approved by um, the uh, Department uh, of, of uh, Environmental Affairs. Um, the second question was um, with regards to uh, um, the, the point system. Uh, and, and again, that's, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. The first question was uh, regarding fees, uh, charging fees. That was a, uh, a mistake. Um, it, we didn't clear the form completely uh, when we applied for last year for the Keith Park. Um, this year, we're, uh, we do uh, charge for um, adult leagues at parks, as the um, uh, Parks Commissioner has, has informed me. Um, we do not charge for youth um, activities at fields, um, and we have sent a letter to the department uh, requesting or notifying them that if there were adult uses uh, of the athletic fields that there would be a fee charged. The second question was about the scoring system, thank you, and um, uh, if, if we changed facilities from baseball to soccer, soccer to baseball, adult soccer, would that uh, affect our scoring system? Uh, that, that does not appear to be the case according to um, the Commonwealth. Uh, and again, grants have to, or the, the final plans do need to be approved by the state. Uh, and lastly, uh, there was a question about um, the design that was submitted um, was not in, um, uh, had not been altered to reflect some of the information that came out of the community meeting. And in uh, the memo that I sent out to you all, um, we had uh, been working with a pro bono designer uh, who had graciously um, worked with us to produce this drawing. Uh, we had four days before the deadline after that meeting. Um, we knew that this was a design build grant. So this was a conceptual drawing. We knew that it was going to change uh, a couple of times over uh, the planning process. So it didn't seem to make sense to go back to somebody who had graciously done some work for us to say, hey, can you spend even more of your dollars to um, change this in four days, two of which were weekends, so that we can get you know, a, a more realistic drawing to, to the Commonwealth. Uh, we are going to, um, we have made uh, commitments at the community meeting, including removing the um, uh, surface parking and to uh, rehabilitate uh, a, a basketball facility and to expand the um, children's play area. So um, those were on the record and there, those are also in uh, my memo to council. So if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to field those. Councillor uh, Farwell. Uh, no questions, but thank you very much for being so responsive. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that we were going to have some type of a fee schedule because there'll be maintenance and operational costs to cover, and I appreciate you yes. looking into the fact that by extracting the soccer field, it won't compromise the quality of our application. And, uh, and going forward, because people actually do read these documents, uh, I'm pleased that in future iterations we'll will reflect whatever the community meetings are because I, I don't want to turn people off from the process. That was the reason I raised it, but. And, and, uh, and we'll start planning um, sooner um, as we get uh, other grant opportunities yeah. so we don't have that kind of short turnaround time. Well, again, my thanks. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. Thank you, Council Rodriguez. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. May. Good evening, sir. Uh, in looking at this order here, it looks like um, the BRA had committed $120,000 for this project. Yes, sir. But 
it was committed at the time when they actually thought there was going to be an adult soccer field being put into, into the playground. Are there any commitments from the VRA to continue with its financial commitment to this particular project, knowing that we're no longer doing the adult soccer league? The BRA, the adult soccer field, the BRA's commitment does stand. They're, they're, they'll continue to? Yes, they will. Okay. And uh, what are we now, I mean, are there any talks within the administration, yourself, in terms of seeking additional fundings or, or funds to we have lost the ability to put a soccer field in this particular field, which, in my, my, my honest opinion, should have never been considered to begin with. Uh, are we now looking at additional uh, places or additional resources to put someplace else so that we can actually take care of the large number of issues that we, I mean, with uh, the, the, the demands that we have for adult soccer in this community? If we can find additional funding or additional funding sources, we will certainly pursue, pursue them. Um, uh, and I don't, Tim keeps track of most other grant opportunities that are uh, in regards to athletic facilities. We follow the parks grants, uh, which is a once a year uh, process, but um, periodically there are other um, foundations who put together um, grant opportunities and, and when we find those, we will certainly pursue them. And now that we have a grants coordinator in house, we'll be working with, uh, hopefully, uh, they'll be accepting that job. Um, we do know that we, we've identified somebody as a potential grants coordinator, I should say, and we will continue to work with that person when they come on to find additional funding. You said if we find additional uh, grants, I mean, how dil diligently are we are going to be in terms of seeking out uh, funds to make sure that we take care of the issues that we have, that is, uh, to, to do something in terms of creating soccer fields in Brockton? If my department finds an opportunity, we will certainly apply. If the grant coordinator finds an opportunity, I'm sure we would apply. Um, I guess I'm, what I'm looking for is, is for me to hear that we will be seeking or looking for funds to do adult soccer fields. I, sorry, I thought I had said that if we find them, we will apply for them. Finding them implies that we're looking for them. Thank you, Mr. May. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank Mr. May for answering all our questions. We did receive um, your email. So um, thank you for answering all my colleagues' questions. And um, I'd like to thank Mr. Uh, Tim Carpenter for working on this grant and everybody else who worked with him on getting us this grant. I hope um, you know that every, this will pass now and we'll be able to actually get the grant and move forward and moving um, the city forward and work getting work done on, whether it's walkers or wherever it may be. So um, with that, I'd like to um, send this favor favorably to the full city council. Second. Motion made, properly seconded, favorable recommendation back to the full council. All in favor? All opposed? Motion carries, favorable recommendation back to the full council. Agenda item number eight, please. Order that pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 44 and in accordance to the City Council Order of October 27, 1997, Section 3, the City Council hereby authorizes the transfer of $18,808 from the sale of Montello Pool account to the Park Department Enterprise account, Park Improvement. These funds are for removal and refurbishing, which includes sandblasting and painting of the existing wrought iron fence from Keith Park and its installation at Perkins Park. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Timothy Carpenter, Superintendent of Park and Recreation. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thanks yourself. for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Do you have anything you want to offer to the uh, Well, just very quickly, Council. Um, as part of the Keith Park renovation, the wrought iron fence along Garfield Street was scheduled to be removed. Um, that side of the new redesign will be open. Uh, it's a beautiful wrought iron fence, it really is. Um, it is now essentially surplus, it has been removed at this point. Um, so what I would like to do is uh, repurpose that fence. Uh, I do need to have it modified slightly. Um, I'd like to have it sandblasted, powder coated, uh, repainted, um, and installed along the top of the front wall at Perkins Park. I think the design of the fence complements very nicely the sort of historic nature of Perkins Park. 
Um, <coughs> I've also provided a, what is admittedly a bad Photoshop picture of what I hope the end product will look like. Thank you. Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. How are you? Fine, thank you. I thank you for the information that you've given us. Um, this looks beautiful. I have just a couple of questions that have been brought um, before me uh, from some constituents. So um, these funds come from the sale of the Montello pool back in, I believe, 1994, 97, 1997. So um, the, it is, um, I've been told that these funds are supposed to be spent specifically in Ward 7. So from hearing that, from getting these calls, I've, I've contacted different departments in the city and I, nobody's been able to give me a, anything that states that. Have you, um, do you know anything about this account or where that uh, would be stated? The order that I've supplied to you guys, a copy of what I believe is the original order um, from 1997, uh, section three stim simply stipulates the proceeds of any such uh, conveyance shall be used only for the acquisition of parkland or for capital improvements to parkland. It doesn't say anything about a specific uh, ward in that. Um, I have found some other um, instances in which um, proceeds from the sale of the Montello pool have been used outside of Ward 7 as well. Do you have the total amount that we received for the sale of the pool back in 1997? I think, I believe, Councillor, it was $274,000, I believe. And can you just give us a few examples of where the funds have been spent? Uh, there was, in 2004, there was $50,000 for the construction of a park, for construction of park improvements, which was in Ward 7. Uh, in 2007, there was $50,000 to prepare city ball fields uh, for spring use. Um, in 2008, there were two council orders, one for 40000 uh, which was for the construction of a playground at the old Howard School. Um, there was also in 2008 a council order for about $50,000, which was a 30% match for GAR Park renovation, which is right here by City Hall. And also in 2008, <coughs> excuse me, there's $105,000, which was a 30% match required for uh, the building of Snow Park, soccer field at Snow Park. So out of those that you stated, I believe only two of them, so 90,000 that was spent actually in, out of the 274,000 that was actually spent in uh, Ward 7. According to the records that I've been able to find, yes. In 2004, do we know what park that is? Um, it, it just says council park. council order simply says construction of park improvements. Park improvements, it doesn't state where. It doesn't state where. Okay. Um, so with this, I think this is great. I, like I said, I haven't been able to find anywhere that states that the, it's supposed to be spent in Ward 7. And as much as I'd like all the money to stay in Ward 7, we have to be a little open-minded. Um, you know, something that came to mind is, for example, if the rocks went up for sale, would we want to keep all those millions just in Ward 3? So um, I, even though we're split up into wards, I think, um, you know, I think we, we can share <coughs> within the city. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. Um, and, and thank you for this information. Um, so I've been on the council 12 years now, and I dealt with um, the predecessor in Ward 7, uh, Chris McMillan. Um, and, and again, um, under Mayor Harrington and Mayor Belzotti, um, the idea was always to use the funds, any remaining funds, to benefit the youth of the city with uh, a strong uh, notion to make sure it improved the benefit of Ward 7. Um, sawed on fields, again, the handicapped playground at the old Howard that is now at the Brookfield. Mm -hmm. um, so I am troubled that the 18,800 um, is being used for fence. And I guess you could argue that under the original order back in 97 when Councilor Donna Daly forwarded it, I mean, you, you just said it, Section 3 is talking about capital improvements, but I just, I, I find it hard pressed that the city couldn't come up with 20 grand or 18 grand from another from another venue from another uh, account and use that 18 to really benefit the kids. 
um, because I, I haven't, in all my life being a Brocktonian, ever seen any kids playing at that park that you're going to put a fence up. Um, but w one thing, Councilors, that I really am troubled by is, is as you recall, uh, in December, when uh, Councilor Cruz was the president, uh, I had stood up and asked respectfully about this agenda item to have any and all documentation from the solicitor's office forwarded uh, to all of us on the council because, I, again, I questioned some of this. And again, I, I do thank Mr. Carpenter for giving this to us tonight, but I did speak to the current Ward 7 Council, and she didn't receive it, I didn't receive it. So again, there's some type of lack of communication um, from some components at City Hall back to this esteemed body. So I, I, I do thank you, uh, Mr. Carpenter, for this information. I, I think the rendering is, is great. I am hard pressed to support this because, again, I, I think that 18 grand, 18, almost 19,000 could be used in a different capacity to benefit kids. But, that, you know, we can agree to disagree on that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Just one question. How much is left in the account prior to the 18,000? I believe the 18,000 is just about all that's left in the account. That's the report that I got. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Council. Any other, any other question, Councilors? No motion? No. Councilor Azar? Actually, um, can you give us just a little rundown on this? Why did you think of this? Uh, how would it help? I mean, I know that these funds are supposed to be, like um, my colleague said, to, you know, to benefit the kids, but how... I mean, this will make an improvement to. Oh, absolutely, Perkins I think Park. it'll be um, <clears throat> make an improvement not only to Perkins Park, and it wasn't something as part of the redesign. Um, I would say it wasn't something I had built into my budget. It wasn't something that I force foresaw um, as part of the design. It was, you know, this fence was coming down, um, and like I say, it's a beautiful old ornamental wrought iron fence. They just, they don't seem to build them like that anymore. Um, I quickly sort of said, all right, I need, this fence needs to be used somewhere. Um, I thought Perkins Park, the, the sort of outlay and the historic architecture that's already exists there, that this fence matched that um, sort of historical uh, architecture that's there. Um, as I said, I didn't build it into my budget. It was something that I needed to creatively look for some funds to be able to do this project. The fence does need to be restored. It does need to be altered in order to fit posts and whatnot onto, the, onto that particular wall. This was the fund that I came up with. Um, a lot of these stipulations, uh, you know, this is sort of the first time I'm hearing about them. Um, so, <clears throat> um, you know, it sort of makes some sense. This was my choice for where I could find the funds. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Studinsky. If I might, Mr. Scrappina, are you going to anchor this fence on top of that stone wall? Correct, sir. Very good. Rather than putting in split grass or any glass or anything like that to stop the people who are hanging over it, et cetera, to make the downtown area look better, we're going to have a nice fence? If that's a side benefit, then that's all the better. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan? Just had a follow-up, if I could. Sure, go ahead. Um, Mr. Carpenter, in terms of that fencing, um, I, I know um, when I first got elected to the City Council, Eldon B. Keith Field, I had requested that the two eagles, the bronze eagles that are affixed on West Elm Street side, be removed from that fence and brought to Brockton High School. I thought it'd be much more appropriate, it'd be much more visible to the general public. And I was told that you couldn't because there was restrictions from that, when that park was consecrated, that you could not do that. I was wondering, uh, is there any, to the best of your knowledge, is there any type of restriction relative to taking a fence from one park and then in installing it at another? Well, E.B. Keith, uh, behind the Arnone, that school department by by, I believe by the trust it was left directly to the school department. So I can't really speak about- No, 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 I'm just, no, I'm using that as an example that there was this, restrictions. On this particular one, I have found no restrictions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Here comes Council, Council Fowle. Uh, good evening. I just have a technical question. Uh, we have some issues at Perkins Park, uh, too many to go into. If this is done, is that going to be substantial enough to withstand the, the different issues that are going on there? Is it e could it be easily damaged? I'd hate to waste the money and then find that the thing is bent over or damaged. Or tell me a little bit about the structural integrity of this thing, and do you think it's going to hold up given the issues that present themselves there? So the posts themselves will be drilled into the granite block that exists there. 
Um, so it'll be anchored into, you know, tons and tons of granite. Um, so I don't think the posts are gonna go anywhere. Um, there are sections of this fence um, that I know have been struck by a car when it was installed <coughs> by Keith Park. And I think the car took the worst of, yeah. of the, uh, the impact. So I'll be honest with you, I'm not worried about the integrity or the structure of the fence um, being installed at Perkins. All right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Councilor. Chairman. Any other questions, Councilors? Council, Board Guard? Oh, thank you, thank you for coming out, Mr. Carpenter. Okay, how am I gonna phrase this? I mean, I'm all for the fence, and I love the idea that you're reusing from one to the other, and it's gonna look rather attractive. But I also, you know, don't want the kids to get ripped off, for <laughs> lack of a better term here. So am I to understand that you already had planned in your budget all the funding you would need for anything that comes, you know, unless barring a disaster, you know, for any of the, what do I wanna say, um, the Little League, um, you know, fields and uh, the soccer fields and uh, other situations of that nature? So we do have um, funds available, budgeted funds for our spring prep is what I would call it for our spring prep, you know, topping of infield mix on baseball field infields. Um, we've actually, um, through the generosity of the mayor's office and the city council, we've gotten a tractor in the past couple of years. Okay. Um, so we'll be able to do a lot of that work in house that before we were paying someone else to do. Um, so I'm hoping that there's a cost savings benefit there as well. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, concerns, councilors? Motion to send favorably to the full city council. Second. Motion has been made and seconded and sent back to the full city council. With favorable recommendation all in favor? Mm -hmm. Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Carpenter. Item number nine. Order that the mayor and or real estate custodian be authorized to accept on behalf of the city of Brockton a parcel of land consisting of 530 square feet, more or less, located at the corner of Main Street and Haywood Ave, owned by Cumberland Farms, incorporated 1813 Main Street, Brockton. More particularly described as shown hmm. as the plan attached here to said conveyance will correct an encroachment on the city sidewalk upon the property owned by Cumberland Farms. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, Benjamin Albanese, real estate custodian, Martin Brophy, clerk of the real estate committee. So councilors, uh, Mayor Carpenter is outside of the Commonwealth. I believe he's down in Washington, D.C. at the, uh, the National Conference of Mayors. And I did again, I did receive uh, an email correspondence that I'll read into the record. Um, Council Sullivan, I'll be un unable to attend tonight's finance meeting. Respectfully, uh, Martin S. Brophy, Treasurer Collector. Um, and I don't see Attorney Albanese. I don't see Mr. Albanese. Make a motion to postpone the next, next finance meeting. Second. Second. Motion made, properly seconded to postpone agenda number nine until the next FinCom. Uh, all in favor, please raise your hand. All opposed, that motion carries. We're going to postpone that until the next finance committee meeting. Council, is anything else? Council, Mr. Chairman, a moment of personal privilege. Absolutely. Um, I'd like to announce that Neighbor Works of Southern Mass is, uh, I believe this is their third or fourth year, that they're holding um, the free tax preparation at da downtown at the main library and also at Massasoit Community College. Uh, it will, the tax preparation will start from uh, February 4th and go through till April 10th. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to call 508-580-0951 and um, ask for Joe Madeo. Uh, there is an lim uh, income limitation, and that's uh, $54,000 per year. So, but it's great. I know every year they um, get more and more people, and it's totally free. And on another note, I'd like to congratulate JJ's Cafe for being named one of Yelp's top 100 places to eat in America and being one of only two restaurants from Massachusetts. So congratulations, and I'm proud to have them in Ward 7. Council Falwell. Yes, just a moment. Of, actually, it's an announcement. There was a woman here earlier who left her purse. Mr. Condon indicates that it's been entrusted over to Officer Healy. So. If she's watching or she needs her purse, uh, contact BPD and he'll take care of it for her. Thank you, Councilor. Councilors, uh, I do want to say again, uh, on behalf of the uh, Finance Committee, I want to apologize again to anybody that came here. I know a lot of constituents came here for agenda items one through, one through five, and I will say uh, that error will not happen again as long as I'm chair. It's unacceptable. So I want to, uh, I want to thank you for... Uh, your indulgence on that matter. Again, it was a procedural uh, error. 
uh, but it won't happen again this year, that's for sure. Anything else? Meeting's adjourned. Listen, last time at zoning, it was... Um, Listen,